why I'm not a fan of goth and alt girls. Hello everyone, and welcome to One Male. In this video, I will share an anonymous comment on goth girls and my thoughts on why some of them can be a significant turn off. Stay tuned in, and make sure to watch until the end. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. So let's read a note from someone anonymous. He says, I have a topic that would be helpful to your audience, especially your younger audience. It's about the truth about alternative women, also called dog girls, suicide girls, or all girls who have suicidal thoughts. I'm mostly talking about girls who dressed and followed the fashion trends of any of these subcultures, ideas about suicide girls, hood rats, ravers, and club kids, as well as gops, emos, punk rockers, metal heads, and less so and more recently, hipsters. Actresses like Farouza Balk and Helena Bon M. Carter helped make this popular growing up in the early 2000s and attending high school and college. Goth was a familiar and commonplace way of thinking. They were always easy to spot because of their colorful, spiky, bleached blonde, or weird hairstyles. They loved tight, shredded skinny jeans, trap pants, leather denim jackets, facial piercings, dark lipstick or eyeliner, beat-up vans or Converse sneakers, and strange pseudo-edgy figures like Jack Skellington or Marilyn Manson. They seemed cynical, uncaring, and like they were trying too hard. After being in short-term and long-term relationships with a few of these girls, I've concluded about them and some warnings for young men. To put it bluntly, all girls are easily among the worst, if not the worst, women on the planet. Even by the standards of Western women today, they are all giant chamberlains who are always looking for a place to belong. Most didn't know or care about their subculture's music or art. Instead, they just wanted more attention than the average woman by being one of the few women in their scene, and they often moved from one subculture group to another. They had a huge number of bait orbiters, depending on which subculture was more popular or cool. These groups were usually full of beta male smucks who were happy to give them attention and were easy to control. They were hoping for a break when the rock star Chad they were hitting tired of them behaving and acting much more skanky than the average chick. Those I did get to bed with were never unique, never worth the wait or the trouble. I had to go through a lot of hoops. Back then, I had a few friends on the beta and insult spectrum who were crazy about these kinds of women. They thought these women would bring something different and new to the table. They were taking their attention on purpose and pretending to be friends with these guys instead of just ignoring them like a preppy cheerleader type of girl. These women gave beta males the impression that they were easy to get with, but in reality, they still hung out with jocks. Chads, Tyrone, and bad boys and use the betas for easy attention. Many of these girls would sneak along with the guys in their groups to rock concerts or parties to meet rock musicians and DJs. I think these women felt very bad about themselves. From what I've seen, these women were usually pretty attractive, around a six or seven. They were almost pretty enough, but not entirely. Or maybe they were too awkward or geeky to be accepted into the groups of the most popular preppy girls, so they were left out. Around high school, when the prettiest and most popular girls usually set up there in groups and social ranks, they became a mo or goth to save face and act like they chose not to be popular, hiding the fact that they were rejected in the spirit of going against the grain and being counterculture. Many of these women grew up to become the woke feminist monsters who now patrol social media and places on the internet where men go. Many of them now say they like video games, science fiction, anime, and comic books so they can watch what men say and do and get even more attention from the weak. 
these things were done by men who took the blue pill. Now that I've been a monk for two years and can go on dates or back to when I was a teenager, I go out with a preppy cheerleader bimbo rather than a goth chick. They never pretended to like the same movies, hobbies, or music I did. In 1994 and 1995, when I was in high school, I had similar experiences, as well as one in the late 1990s. She was not like the other goth girls in art school. She was jewelry, drove a classic 1950s hearse that she still has, and even worked on student horror films. She started planning zombie walks not to impress a guy, but because she likes that. She still lives across the street from a cemetery, and her Christmas decorations are just redressed skeletons from Halloween. It looks like the nightmare before Christmas. She also collects monster toys and plays with the fairmen. Her neighbors always complain, but the city can't do anything about it. If I did a podcast about the waltz, she would be on it. In the mid-1990s, she also had sleeve tattoos before anyone else, except for criminals. She was nice to be around and had traits I've seen in independent women, like creativity, intelligence, being prolific, working at their craft for 60 to 80 hours a week, being creative or original, trying new things, and risking failure and embarrassment. T recognize all of that in her, but 99% of Gothimo girls won't be like her. So I get what you're saying. I just read that about 75% of people are neither creative nor innovative. 12 is clever, but they can't apply theory to what they do. Only 1% of both men and women are both creative and innovative. Only 12% of men are both creative and innovative. I've been taking the monk boat for years, so I'm very good at telling the difference between fake Magilla and the real thing. People say that these women like nerd culture. I see them at comic book conventions where I go to do interviews. All of them are tall, skinny, and misshapen, and they all try to hide this under some figure representing a man's repressed sexual ideal. Many of them probably just wanted to be closer to the chats. As a kid, I didn't fit into any subculture because I was too weird for most of them. So I would talk to the leader of each clique one-on-one. -on -one. They probably wanted to talk to someone with an independent mind because they were tired of talking to guys who would follow orders and agree with everything they said, like Biff's henchmen. I don't know why you think goth and suicide chicks were famous in the 2000s. Before 1988, when goth culture started, there was punk. I can remember when it came out in 1994. In high school, I saw girls with shaved eyebrows and crazy makeup. But, of course, you would have seen this sooner if you lived in a big city like Los Angeles, Toronto, Chicago, or even New York. I think they were desperate for attention from bad boys who didn't follow the rules but they settled for the kind of beta male who could be a school shooter. When not fitting in becomes too popular, it turns into fitting in. Do you think Creole satinists will wear that kind of clothing and make that kind of art in public? This is what a lot of the so-called gothic wicked ladies did when I was in high school. You say they were six and sevens, but they were more like threes and fours. Fat, tall, and short tattis with an attitude like Helena Bonham Carter, Fusibuland, and others wore black to hide how big their behinds were. This would have been fine back then, which is why these women turned into the angry, unhappy feminist type. They didn't get the guys they wanted back then, and their subculture taught them to act like they didn't feel anything but anger and bitchiness as if they all had pale painted resting faces or something. But who was there to stop them from getting tattoos and piercings? I think some people use the goth subculture as an excuse to be weird, but I never thought of most of them as anything more than a bunch of dowdy-looking bumpkins. 
Their strangely sized bodies were hidden by their strange suicide girl costumes. In the early 1990s, the grunge girls were another group like goth girls. They were also tall and hung out with the druggies outside who smelled like they had bathed in liquid smoke. None of those girls dress like they're still a member of that subculture today. I wonder if those goth girls back then are still into the same look and music today. Now, I want to talk about the latest silly thing that's being talked about in India. Change is happening to their laws. If you want to know more about it, watch the previous video, where I also explain how these changes might threaten Indian men and what is in it for them in the future.